Hello everyone and welcome to day 10 of our 30 day study challenge. We are one third of the way through. Congratulations for sticking with it this long. If you're just now joining us, thanks so much for dropping in. Today we're going to be talking about anaerobic respiration and fermentation, mostly fermentation, but we'll talk about the difference in a minute. Today we're going to be doing a brief content review and then some practice questions so you can really exercise those active studying muscles. Let's go. So very briefly, yesterday we talked about aerobic cellular respiration, where we go through all of the steps of glycolysis and then the Krebs cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain, if you got that far in the video. But the important thing to know is that oxygen is truly an important ingredient, but sometimes some organisms who are capable of performing respiration cannot do aerobic respiration because they don't have enough oxygen in the cell or in the mitochondria. Other times other organisms can only perform anaerobic processes. Now anaerobic and means not or without, aerobic with air, so not with air, means without air or oxygen. Now here's where it gets a little tricky and sometimes teachers will call this the same thing. Anaerobic respiration is technically when we go through that electron transport chain at the end of our cellular respiration reactions and there's something other than oxygen to accept the final electrons. Fermentation is an extension of glycolysis. So after glycolysis, we've generated a little ATP, then there's gonna be some more reactions that the cell undergoes without going into the other steps of cellular respiration. So we're not gonna do the Krebs cycle, it can be done without the presence of mitochondria. So all of those details are a little bit high level. So if you're just in regular biology or you're not quite ready to get in the weeds with that college level or AP level biology content, it's okay. Just be aware that aerobic cellular respiration involves oxygen and anaerobic respiration does not. Now in comparison, one of the main things you wanna remember is that compared to aerobic cellular respiration, which produces 36 ATP, fermentation only produces two ATP. Now I have a little bacteria on the screen because many bacteria can perform fermentation, other single cell organisms like yeast often do it, but we can also do it in our cells as well. Now there's different types of fermentation which we'll get into. So in our muscle cells, for example, this is one type of fermentation here, which is called lactic acid fermentation based on one of the byproducts. So instead of having glucose and oxygen working together, we just have glucose. And at the end of these reactions, we are left with lactic acid and ATP. Now, we used to think that when our muscles get really sore in workouts, it's because of this lactic acid and because our body's been doing so much lactic acid fermentation. Scientists are now kind of debunking that idea and saying that the soreness is not really from lactic acid, it's more likely from little micro tears in your muscles. But lactic acid is a byproduct of lactic acid fermentation and we do perform it in our muscle cells when we run low on oxygen. Now there's another type of fermentation, alcoholic fermentation, which can happen in yeast, it can happen in some bacteria. This process can also be completed without the presence of oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide, ethanol, which is a form of alcohol, and ATP. Still just two ATP, but it has those other byproducts, carbon dioxide and ethanol. Now let's take a look at this chart comparing the products and what goes in and what goes out of each of these. So within cellular respiration, remember we need glucose and oxygen. That's what makes it an aerobic process. An aerobic process, not anaerobic. Um, and then the products are 36 ATP molecules and carbon dioxide. Now in our two types of fermentation we just talked about, lactic acid fermentation also requires glucose. Alcoholic fermentation also requires glucose. They are both anaerobic processes, meaning they occur without the presence of oxygen. They both produce two ATP, Lactic acid fermentation has also lactic acid as a byproduct and alcohol fermentation produces ethanol and CO2 as byproducts. Okay, let's get into a little practice for today. In the lab, a scientist is studying the energetic processes of yeast. What products may indicate that fermentation occurred in the yeast? A, carbon dioxide and oxygen, B, sodium and nitrates, C, oxygen and ATP, or D, ethanol and carbon dioxide. Think about it. Correct answer is D, ethanol and carbon dioxide. Remember that ethanol, type of alcohol, and CO2 are byproducts of alcoholic fermentation, so this would be evidence that the yeast is performing alcoholic fermentation. In a bacterial cell, what is likely happening when lactic acid is generated? A, bacteria are using an electron transport chain. B, bacteria are producing lactic acid in protein synthesis. C, bacteria are generating ATP through photosynthesis. Or D, bacteria are using sugars in the absence of oxygen to produce ATP. Think about it. Correct answer is 
D. Bacteria are using sugars in the absence of oxygen to produce ATP, which will provide energy for the cell. All right, this one's a little bit long, but I promise it's not that hard. In a lab, a student adds three liquids to yeast containers, grape juice, apple juice, and water. Then they place a balloon over the top of each container with the yeast. In the containers with the yeast and grape juice and yeast and apple juice, the balloon blows up. The yeast and water container does not. Why did the balloons in the grape juice and apple juice tubes blow up, but the balloon with the water tube didn't blow up? If you need to reread that, go ahead and pause. A, the water did not have enough yeast in it. B, the yeast in the water were doing cellular respiration, not fermentation. C, no sugar was present in the water for the yeast to ferment. Or D, there was too much carbon dioxide in the water tube. Think about it. Correct answer is C, no sugar was present in the water for the yeast to ferment. All right, one more. Which is a difference between cellular respiration and alcoholic fermentation? A, production of ATP. B, production of CO2. C, presence of glucose, or D, number of ATP produced. Think about it. Correct answer is D, number of ATP produced. Now, both of them still produce ATP, both of them still generate carbon dioxide, and both of them still need glucose, but alcoholic fermentation does not require oxygen, and it only produces two ATP as opposed to the larger number of ATP that we get in cellular respiration. All right, thanks so much for being with us today. Tomorrow is day 11 of our 30 day study challenge. Keep sticking with it if you've been with us this far. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.